Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to ask this fun question. Is Linux communist? And uh, this is a neat one that uh, I thought was neat to address. Now, this actually comes from the suggestions that uh, somebody gave. So uh, if you missed any of the weekly news roundup shows, I was uh, been looking at the analytics for a couple months. And one of the things that I have noticed is that in the weekly news roundup, the, um, the news programs actually get a lot fewer views than other videos that I do. And one logical question you can have is, is it because the content is not explicitly Linux? Any channel called Switch to Linux maybe should cover more Linux stuff. Or is it the weekend? People have different viewing habits over the weekend. Some people said it was, I didn't know really what the video was about. I thought I was going to get a Microsoft rant. It's a whole news program instead. So maybe it's a level of news. But if you knew it was some degree of news, would you have watched it? That's really what my question was at the beginning of the next videos. And uh, so here's actually about the last week's worth of videos. And you'll see that brainwave ID verification, which to me is a compelling topic. I'd click on that video. Weekly News Roundup didn't even get a thousand views. Whereas the, uh, somebody critic corrected my pronunciation this is pronounced woola the privacy browser that wasn't gets over 3,000 views the brain chip implants weekly news roundup 800 uh this odd one by wix was also 800 um maybe that just supports the idea it's not linux based content whereas the debian update to the non-free direction 5,000 views and the privacy news 500 views uh, the default Firefox, Change in the Wind, almost 2,000. And this one is a weekly news roundup, but it's directly tied to two major software, uh, Microsoft as the company and Edge as the browser. This one gets over 1,600 views. This is the one where somebody had said, um, you know, I thought it was just going to be a giant rant on Microsoft Edge and it being a whole news program. So maybe there is definitely a marketing thing. So we'll be experimenting with that uh, this week to see if there's something we can do different. But there was one really nice comment here. And uh, I, I'm going to leave the, the name of the person off because some of it could be questionable, some of it not. And just an abundance of caution, we're just going to go ahead and leave the name off. But here is the comment, and uh, it had a lot of really cool things. So we're going to spend this episode addressing pretty much everything in here because this is an excellent, excellent comment. Um, I think there might be some reasons for the low view count. Number one, please try to maintain the same volume. If the volume increases all of a sudden... <laughs> That's not good for our ears. My apologies. All right. If the volume increases all of a sudden, that's not good for our ears. Okay. This is something that we've had a long debate on on the channel for a long time, including some memes a while back that uh, for a while I was putting on like a little headphone warning notification just before things would get loud and post editing. Part of the fun style is the unhingedness because some people like watching unhinged crazy lunatics. Some people want the really calm and just the facts news, please. And so we actually talked about this at some point in time. I did do a couple tests, although I should do the couple tests more post-processing the videos with the same system that I use for audiobook standardization because that gets rid of the highs and the lows. It doesn't RMS normalize. Maybe that's something that I need to start doing on every single weekly news roundup video is to get all of the, the normalization of the audio. Uh, it it should still, you can still tell when you're unhinged, but it shouldn't push the limits out as much because it runs an RMS normalization and then it runs an, ampli uh, an amplification limit. So you can't have super highs uh, in super lows. It gets rid of the super lows with the RMS and it gets rid of the highs. That's how you do audiobook production uh, to make sure your books are available for sale on Audible, Amazon, whatnot. So that's something I can do and I already have the script set up to do it. So uh, it's 
It's a few extra steps, but it's worth doing. Uh, some people like the unhingedness. Some people don't. For a while, I did the weekly news roundup without the unhingedness, and people didn't like it as much. Uh, but that is definitely a point of criticism to do. All right, number two is an interesting one. Uh, maybe keep the discussion about the news topics within FOSS and tech, and then 2B, uh, not about your personal beliefs. Let's address 2A first. That was actually part of the question. Should we change the weekly news roundup to a system that's, you know, FOSS tech related only? Uh, the advantages of that, obviously it stays closer to the, the switch to Linux uh, title of the channel, although the spirit of the channel, I switched to Linux because of these moving parts in our world, driving and forcing people into it. The weekly news roundup is the one consistent thing I did on this channel. From day one on this channel, I ran a weekly news roundup, uh, which covered privacy and business and a few other topics, although it has changed throughout the years. Sillyville was not always a part of it. Uh, banned news is new. Uh, so, and that is a question. Of course, uh, guys like like um, uh, guys like uh, uh, Linux Experiment, they do a FOSS tech related only one. Uh, I'm not sure if they still are, but TechLore was doing it as a uh, co-podcast with someone else. So that is certainly an issue there uh, that we can do. <clears throat> so within this, uh, within this, what we wanted to look at is keeping the topics within FOSS or doing the late, the big greatest business. Maybe we just need to look at different topics or approach things in different ways. Okay. That is definitely one of the points I wanted to know who thinks we should do the weekly news round as FOSS tech type stuff only. Uh, part B, not about your personal beliefs. Okay, this is an interesting one. Um, I could report just the solid facts and do that and leave all forms of belief in and out. I think it depersonalizes the content though. And everybody filters their stories through a personal belief. If I'm reporting just the facts and a Vice News article comes out and I call it a leftist rag because every single article they do that could be remotely positive towards somebody on the right, they completely unhinge it so it sounds off the wall crazy instead. That is a weird idea. And honestly, all news has some degree of bias, even... Uh, <laughs> Is Fox still alive after ousting Tucker? I don't know. Um, you know, fair and balanced. Is it really fair and balanced? I don't watch Fox and haven't for a long time because every single time I turn on Fox, it's just two talking heads yelling over each other. And then you get that. Same problem with Bill Whittle. Like, I used to watch some of that, and then they started the Fox News saying, get two guys yelling over each other. Shut the hell up. I don't want to hear that. Okay. But injecting your personal beliefs, it personalizes the news. It, it pushes the news through the filters that the filters are there. You might disagree with my personal beliefs. I made a comment not too long ago. I don't remember if it was on that program or somewhere else. So I was talking about a friend of mine likes watching John Oliver. And uh, John Oliver, and, and I asked him, I was like, you know, uh, because I know his, his views and, and I, you know, I do occasionally catch one of his shows and I think it's hilariously funny, even though I may disagree with a lot of it. He's like, yeah, the facts are completely right. It's just he injects his personal belief and bias into it. And uh, and for this reason, he comes to a complete opposite conclusion with the same set of facts. In fact, there was a very, very, very fascinating uh, truth stream media video about this recently. I think it was actually the one where they were discussing the situation in East Palestine, where the set of facts is universally reported, but people on the right and people on the left had completely radically different conclusions about how it happened and what should be done. So it was a very interesting thing to see such polarization in our world. The fact of the matter is I am a Bible believing Christian and I filter my life through that. And I, I did not come to those conclusions because I was raised in a church. I was raised in an atheistic nonsense with a whole lot of garbage and abuse going all over the place. All right. And I came to the conclusions of life after exploring for meaning in life across every form of religion. I was a practicing warlock at one point in time in my life. People came to me to cast spells for them. Okay. And I recognized all these different elements and all of these different things. I do not want to report the news dry and bold because I'm not an unbiased journalist. I'm a YouTuber and I have edutainment and I'm going to inject my beliefs and thoughts into some of these things because I'll tell you, sometimes those beliefs and thoughts are entertaining and sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong. <laughs> but this brings us down to the last 
point of discussion. Something else, you comment on big tech trying to make a digital communist utopia. Is it so? Aren't the values of FOSS more based on communism and socialism than anything else? How a country's government behaves, cough, cough, CCP, cough, might not be communism even if it's in the name. Okay, this part of the comment, I am going to call you out as completely misunderstanding what communism is. But also understand this, I give a lot of grace because a a lot of people don't understand what communism is, especially since it has changed, evolved and breed and and um, integrated with a lot of different ideas. We have communism and socialism. We have communism and fascism. We have capitalistic communism. We have anarcho communism. There's a lot of different things in the political sphere. And so I, I thought, actually, believe it or not, the Wikipedia article, which I have two Wikipedia articles here to show, uh, did a pretty good job and actually a pretty balanced job covering this, which was kind of interesting to see because there are, anytime you get like solid, factual, what's the molecular weight or the structure of a molecule, Wikipedia is pretty spot on. Once you get into the more social lens, it tends to not be as spot on because, again, just like our news bias is injected into the reporting. That's why I don't mind the fact that you know where I stand on these, why I do inject my opinion, so that you kind of know, yeah, this is kind of the facts, but here's my opinion, and I make it a little heavier on the opinion. Um, who knows? Maybe I just need to go a little bit lighter on the opinion and then leave the opinion for the very, very end. I don't know. I'm not sure it'd be quite as organic. But communism is a left-wing to far-left sociopolitical philosophical and economic ideology within a socialist movement whose goal is to establish a communist society, a socioeconomic order centered around common ownership of the means of production, distribution, and the exchange that allocates products to everyone within society. Communist society also involves the absence of private property, Absence of social classes, absence of money, and absence of the state. Communists often seek voluntary state of self-governance, but disagree on the means to this end. This reflects a distinction between a more libertarian approach of communization, revolutionary spontaneity, and worker self-management, and more. So we're going to stop right there for a brief moment, because there is a ton in there to unpack. So at its core, a communist society is a group of people who are self-agreed <clears throat> with no government or oversight, to have no absolute private property, no classes, no monies, and to distribute all production and products to everybody in their society. <clears throat> At its core, the communist society is the perfect form of social interaction. We have a small fundamental problem, and here come those personal beliefs again. We have the fundamental problem that humans are inherently sinful. We have original sin. We are not blank slates. We are not basically good. We are inherently evil, touched in all aspects of our life by sin caused by us disobeying God, uh, disobeying God in the Garden of Eden. So because of that, it means that not Every aspect of every person is wholly evil. That is not what the doctrine of total depravity teaches. The doctrine of total depravity teaches all elements of the creation are touched and impacted by sin. Good elements, of course, can come out. We have, you know, and this is why I sit exactly where I sit politically. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. And I have, I have people in my church, for example, say, you should switch to the Republican Party so you can vote for the Republicans in the primary. No. I'm not going to because the Republican Party has also walked away from all form of truth and all form of conscious thought. It's follow our political party. We're going this way. Follow our political party. We're going this way. I don't want to follow either one of you two donkeys. One of you is a donkey and the other one's worse, you know? One of you is an elephant and the other one's worse. I don't know. Okay, but neither one of them are following exactly where they need to go. Why? Because I believe the only thing that's going to be right for this world is when Christ comes back and we all, uh, we are all in him who are remaining, of course. Um, and uh, somebody else had said, hey, you should put your uh, Christian channel on there real quick uh, because uh, you should do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that here real quick. 
Uh, let me go ahead and uh, this new version of Fire Crap is actually getting in my way. Um, so my Christian work is at rwalkinchrist.com or YouTube slash rwalkinchrist or BitChute or Odyssey or Rumble at rwalkinchrist. This is my main stuff over here, rwalkinchrist.com. We have a lot of stuff going on over there. Um, I write on this topic a lot. I have eight Christian books. Uh, in addition to that, we do podcasts and stuff like that. Okay. And I am a more of a theologian than I am a technologist. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but with that being said, the problem with a communist society is that original human sin. Now, this is where some people will suggest in the Bible that the uh, early Christians were communists. So there's a couple sections here, and for some reason I lost my first one, which in is in Acts um, uh, 2. I don't know why my... Uh my second verse here died, uh, but in Acts 4, uh, 32 to 35, the congregation of those who believed were of the one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed anything belonged to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. With a great power, the apostles gave testimony to the resurrections of the Lord Jesus Christ. Abundance of grace was given to them, and for them was not a needy person among them, for all who were owners of the land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet, and they would be distributed each as he had need. The other one is in Acts 2. I had this open, and I actually closed it. I think it's 45 and 46. They began selling their property and possessions and were sharing with all of them as anyone might have need, day by day with one mind in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. So some people have suggested that Christianity is supposed to be communist. Of course, this viewer is say, suggesting that um, Linux is communist. Here is those definitions of communism, and remember, at its core, a communist society has the absence of private property, the absence of social classes, money, or the state. This is where we have our problem, and that is that when we talk about in our videos and we talk about um, something else, you comment on big tech trying to make digital communist utopia. Is it so? Well, this video here was from a group called Forum for the Future. Of course, they received so much backlash, they took it down. This is a four minute video. We are not going to play all of it, but I want to show you the part that is definitely communist. So uh, they'll put a website out at the very end of the site. That is no longer there. You can go back in the Wayback Machine and actually find the page. But this is what they wanted to do. This is an organization with a lot of business leaders, not too unlike the WEF. Of course, this video came out in 2011. We are talking 13 years ago when this video came out. And so a lot of things have changed, but notice that a lot of things have stayed the same. So this video seeks to ask, how will people's travel in the cities of the future be? Mega Cities on the Move, your guide to the future of sustainable urban mobility in 2040. In here, they have basically what was going on in Demolition Man. They have an undercover, uh, an underground society. Um, and the underground society is the uh, the cry from the freedom ghettos, okay? Um, so the freedom ghettos, of course, this is where all the people are like, we don't want anything to do with this nonsense. Of course, they're just called the freedom ghettos. Um, but this is really uh, a world, a world of fossil fuels and expensive energy. The only solution is tightly planned and controlled urban support. This is the definition of that communist society. Everything is tightly controlled. Listen to this. And do some extra stuff here. Oh, hi. I'm so glad you're on time. I'm V. I'm looking forward to showing you around Planopolis today. My husband works from home. He's a virtual engineer working on one of the city's desalination plants. He controls the robots who do all the important maintenance. I think he basically plays computer games for a living. <laughs> Are you ready to go? Have you got your calorie card open on your smartphone? Okay, so you have your smartphone. Now remember, this is 2011. Smartphones were not that widely used. 
So on your smartphone, you now have a calorie card. This tells you your remaining credits, the amount of time that you can move throughout the day. I registered your visit with Slick Travel Corp the other day, so they've... Uh... So Slick Travel Corp sounds like a giant business trying to regulate every portion of our society like not the communist utopia, but the socialist utopia, which is the transition period between capitalism and communism. The problem is communism doesn't really work, and we've gotten into that a touch, but we're going to get into why that is in a moment. But let's continue on with Slick Travel Company, the corporation owning it all. I allotted you a journey time to, to match mine. It makes so much sense, doesn't it? Switch off brain and go to work. <laughs> With this many no people around, either. I'm glad there's a mega computer in charge. We are so lucky. Okay, so here, their kids are in school and they're going to be given their assignment. Just like the communist society is going to tell you what to do. Uh, our kids were allocated a school quite near my practice so I can drop them off on the way. It saves on our calorie ration. Well, it won't be long until the little darlings get their career announcements. Yes, they get their career announcements. Not what would you like to do, Johnny, but here, Johnny, you get to go to the salt mines. Um, and you, uh, little Susan, you can go over to the lithium mines. We do, in fact, need to get more lithium out of the earth so we can make more batteries for our electric society. I've been working so hard, so I'm sure they'll get something good. N not that there's anything wrong with fixing carbon scrubbers for a living or anything. Ooh, that's nasty. Are you hungry? Let's pop to the market as we're passing. Right, what's on the menu this month? No, not meat. It's not your birthday. Oh, you can't have meat. It's not your birthday. Eat the bags instead. The Global Food Council are doing a really good job of keeping food production going. <laughs> so the Global Food Council, of course, who's this run by? I mean, company. you don't get the choice you used to, but we're better off than most. I think it's probably easiest to walk. Okay, so now we're going to walk to where we need to go. I don't know, maybe should we do this whole thing? I you barely know. see a car in the city it's center terrifying. nowadays, unless you're rich. <laughs> oh, look at that. Only the rich guys, uh, the rich, powerful guys, they can uh, still have those. Who are those rich and powerful guys? Oh, it's the people at the top, the people that running the companies. You know, those ones that are indeed going to drive our country into a communist dystopia. <laughs> Oh, the state knows they just aren't practical anymore. We're all trying to meet our global carbon deal. Electric bikes are so much better for getting around our neighborhood. And why Susie waste valuable space on car parks when you can use them to grow food? Yeah, yeah we don't need to uh, park cars, just... I don't care what you say, Alex. They so... don't deserve to live in that ghetto. They are completely disconnected. No high-speed transport system, yeah. no new internet. Th they miss out on jobs and many essential services, too. Oh, hi again. <laughs> what a day. Yeah, she, she I had just to make a went off on her husband because he was talking about, hey, maybe we should go over to the... To, to hear where we want freedom. Ah, no, that's just where the ghettos are. They'll have rat burgers down there cooking on the grill. Emergency visit to the Cry Freedom ghettos. I mean, I miss my sister like mad, but I'm glad they went when they moved to New Amsterdam. They're safe from climate change on the floating city. Yeah. See, here's the thing. This is, this is over a decade ago. This is what their goal was. And just like the, you know, the WEF pushes out there, you know, by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. They pulled that video down. Of course, you can get it all over the internet now, but they pulled that video down because it was inconvenient to their worldview or inconvenient to, it was inconvenient to their bottom line that the truth got out there and people like, they were shocked. Like, whoa, what do you mean people don't want to, be completely happy owning absolutely nothing. Of course, who owns it? Understand this. Lyft and Uber both are working together to convince the main population it's too expensive and inconvenient to own a car. Just use us. Because it's going to be a two-tier society. The monopolistic company that owns everything and the rest of us plebs among society who are the slaves to those individual companies. That is what we're talking about, and that is why I push back against it. We're a little off target here, but what is the big uh, what is the big problem with communism? As we said before, it is the original sin, and what happens is communism itself kills more people than anything else does. These numbers are not really in dispute. There's been a whole lot of people talking about them. As few as 60 million 
in the this is just in the 20th century. 60 million all the way up to the the accepted number right now by most people is 110 million people have been killed in the pursuit of establishing communism. Sometimes it's just crushing the distance. Sometimes it's rounding up the people who are not the the perfect Aryan race. Sometimes it is uh, sometimes it is just silencing the critics who have a word about you that's like, eh, I don't really like this. See, all of these are, are big problems. These numbers are not in dispute. Several different academic stories. I was trying to find one unified study. There isn't one. Thousands and thousands and thousands of stories out on the internet, all with the same stuff. Okay. 110 million is the acceptable number of people who are killed by it. So ultimately, is Linux communist? Here's the preamble to the GNU, which is um, the, the GNU public license, uh, the GNU general public license, free copy leftist license for software and other kinds of work. Licenses for most software and other practical works are designated to take away your freedom to share or change the works. By contrast, the GNU general public license, the GPL, which most Linux distributions are released under, is intended to guarantee your freedom to share and change all versions of the program to make sure it remains free software for all of its users. We, the Free Software Foundation, use GNU general public license for most of our software as it applies to any other work released in this way by its authors. You can apply it to your programs too. When we speak of free software, we are referring to freedom, not price. Our general public license are designated to make sure that you have the freedom to distribute copies of free software and charge for them if you wish and you will receive the source code or can get it if you want. That you can change the software or use it a piece of it in new free programs and that you, uh, you know you can do these things. To protect your rights, we need to prevent others from denying you these rights or asking you to surrender these rights. Therefore, you have certain responsibilities if you distribute copies of the software or modify it. The responsibilities... Uh, to respect the freedom of others. For example, if you distribute copies of such a program, whether it's gratis or for, for a fee, you must pass on the to the recipients the same freedoms that you received. You must make sure that they too receive and can get the source code, and you must show them the terms so they know their rights. Developers that use GNU GPL product in your rights with two steps. One, assert copyright of the software, and two, offer this license giving you legal permission to copy, distribute, or modify it. For the developers and authors, protection GPL clearly explains there is no warranty of the free software. Both users and authors sake the GPL requires modified versions to be marked as changed so their problems will not be attributed erroneously to authors of a previous version. Some devices are designed to deny users access to install or run modified versions of the software inside of them. Although the manufacturer can do so, this is fundamentally incompatible with the aim of protecting users' freedom to change the software. The systematic pattern of those abuse occurs in the area of products for individuals to use, which is precisely where it is most unacceptable. Therefore, we have designated this version of the GPL to prohibit the practice for those products if such a product problem arises substantially in other domains, we stand ready to extend this provision to the domains in the future versions of the GPL as needed to protect the freedom of users. Finally, every program that is threatened constantly by software patents. States should not allow patents to, re to restrict development and use of software on general purpose computers, but in those that do, we wish to avoid the special danger that patents apply to a free program could make it effectively proprietary. To prevent this, GPL assures that patents cannot be used to render programs non-free. Then there's a lot down here. We're not going to read all that, obviously. But let's go back to those definitions of the communism to see if Linux fits in these definitions. So, um, the communist society involves the absence of private property, social classes, money, and the state. All right, so at its core, is the GNU lacking private property? It's irrelevant. Social classes, it is irrelevant. Money, eh, sort of irrelevant. And the state, they make restrictions on the state saying, yeah, the state can't do this, that, or the other. Okay. They seek voluntary state of self-governance, but disagree to the means to the end. 
All right. Is this Linux? Mm, in a way, yes. All right. This reflects distinction between the more libertarian approach, uh, et cetera. Um, so what it boils down to is you look at the definitions and you understand it. When we're talking about communism in the terms of the a communist dystopia and big businesses driving us in this communist dystopic direction, we're not speaking about the Linux or FOSS software per se, except to suggest we're using this as a means to push back against their communist agenda. On that basis, no, it resists it. But at its simple core base, yes, I would suggest it is because nobody can claim direct ownership. Nobody can hoard it or abuse it for their own use. Nobody can use it exclusively at the denial of other people. On that basis, it is. Just like in the perfect world, free of human sin, the communist philosophy works. The problem is how we attempt to implement it in our daily use. And as a company takes the, the uh, free and open source software, ignores the GPL, stamps the proprietary license, and then holds that as a subscription service over somebody's head without giving you the option to review that source code that they actually stole from in the first place, that raises itself serious and fundamental problems with the, with the way the world works. That is where the human sin comes in because in a lot of these cases, it's not we're seeking to make a buck. It's we're seeking to make so many bucks at the absolute exclusion of everybody else. So I am not an anti-capitalist for sure. I am not a communist for sure. But true capitalism, as was laid out by Adam Smith, carries with it an element of morality because it's that element of morality which is the one thing that holds communism back from being the most evil thing there is. So when we go back to our original ideas, you comment about big tech trying to make a digital communist utopia. Actually, no, I comment it trying to make a communist dystopia. A utopia, everything is great. A dystopia, everything has turned into a hell in the handbasket, except for the people on the very top. You know, those guys driving the cars. Ooh, look, mom, a rich guy in the car going down the street. How do we know it's a rich guy? Because he's in a car going down the street. Well, us plebs have to walk and utilize our smartphone app to determine our current car. Carbon credit. Okay, that's a problem, you see. So when we're talking about FOSS, yes, at its core value, FOSS is based on the pure form of communism, not socialism. Socialism, understand, is a different thing. Socialism is when the central government attempts to seize power of the production and then distribute that to the people it wants to distribute it to. This is exactly where in the Biden administration, they're rounding up our tax dollars and then giving it out equitably, which basically means to people who aren't white first, which is why they've gotten shot down in the courts every time they tried to do that, because that is discriminatory. But a communist society at its purest form without the human nature is the perfect society. But once you add the human nature, we immediately shift to socialism and it becomes a giant, who do you know, what do you know? So at its core, yes, Linux and FOSS is pure communist at its truest form, not socialist, which is a completely different beast. And how a country's government behaves, cough, cough, CCP, cough, might not be communism, even if it's in the name. No, the, the communism, as terms of the social geopolitical movement, the reason communist China is a communist country is precisely because the government dictates to the businesses what they can and what they cannot do with a micromanaging control. That is where the communist view is, although technically that is socialist. Socialism is a transition phase between pure communism, which we cannot achieve, although it would be the perfect ideal, and capitalism, which is the best we can do with the fallen state of man. So, is Linux communist? Fundamentally, I would say the answer is yes. Fundamentally, <laughs> Linux is indeed communist. In the pure sense, not in the crazy dystopian, we're going to take over the world sense. So, for this reason, fighting against the craziness coming in our world can only be done as the world embraces free, 
and open source software. That is why it is a must for us to push free and open source software. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do a shout out. We're going to do the screenshots for it, but you can head on over to uh, Malleable Computers. Use the link tlm.li forward slash Malleable. You can look for a Linux computer uh, on with the link over there. And uh, the link for that will be in the description down below. Thank you for watching, everybody. And uh, let me know your comments to this one down below. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.